Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. And this is special guest Mrs. Irene Oliver and she's my mum. Now mum is here for two reasons. Firstly, I brought her up to my place for the weekend so that I could show her how wonderful it is here and convince her that she should actually move closer to my place. She currently lives about an hour and a half's drive away. Alas, she tripped over a cat in the street on her first day and now she has multiple jaw fractures. So she's staying a bit longer than planned. But the other reason she is here is because mum was born in 1940 when there were very few vaccines available. So mum saw firsthand what can happen when children are exposed to childhood diseases without the benefits of vaccines. She had friends who died and she had friends who were left crippled. Isn't that right, mum? That's correct, yes. Unfortunately, vaccines have been a victim of their own success. Most people have no idea how dangerous childhood diseases can be because vaccines mean that most people have never seen these diseases. This means that people are more vulnerable to believing the nonsense spread by anti-vaxxers. And in this video, we will be covering one such study that has been doing the rounds and was even mentioned by the new United States Secretary of Health and Human Services, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who has long been known as a spreader of dangerous vaccine misinformation. So this is a supposed study here. It's called Vaccination and Neurodevelopmental Disorders, a study of nine-year-old children enrolled in Medicaid. And it's published in Science, Public Health Policy and the Law, which calls itself a journal. However, if you look at the source code of the page, you can see that it's just a WordPress blog masquerading as a journal. And it essentially exists so that it can publish anti-fax and pseudoscientific bollocks that is rejected by real journals. In fact, this particular study had already been retracted twice before it ended up here. So what is the study claiming to show? It's claiming to show that various neurodevelopmental disorders are increased in vaccinated children compared with unvaccinated children. I won't go into detail about what the various neurodevelopmental disorders are because it's all bollocks anyway. But as you'd expect of anti-vaxxers, they have honed in on autism spectrum disorders because, of course, they have. And they are claiming that higher numbers of vaccinations are associated with higher incidences of autism spectrum disorder diagnoses. This is also total bollocks. I'm guessing you want a little more detail than the paper is bollocks though. So let's get into it. Firstly, the study can't make any comparisons between vaccinated and unvaccinated children because they have no idea which children are unvaccinated. The study is based on Medicaid billing records from Florida. And what they've done is said anyone who has a billing code for a vaccination is vaccinated. And anyone who doesn't have a billing code for vaccination is unvaccinated. But of course, not having a billing code for vaccination doesn't mean you are unvaccinated because you can be vaccinated outside of the Medicaid system. In fact, they admit in their limitations that only 1% of two-year-olds are unvaccinated, but their study shows 10% of their sample is unvaccinated. So basically the study is just comparing two different groups of vaccinated children, children who got some of their vaccinations through Medicaid and children who got their vaccinations elsewhere. 
Now, you may be wondering why there was a higher incidence of neurodevelopmental disorders in the children who were vaccinated through Medicaid as opposed to children who were vaccinated elsewhere. The answer is there wasn't. Just like they have no idea if what children weren't vaccinated, they have no idea if what children had neurodevelopmental disorders or autumn spectrum disorder specifically. All they know is what children had a billing code related to a neurodevelopmental disorder. And obviously, parents who are more likely to visit doctors regularly for vaccinations are also more likely to get diagnosed with all conditions because you can't be diagnosed with anything if you don't visit a doctor. There are also a number of other issues with the study, including the study looked at nine-year-olds, but autism spectrum disorder is usually diagnosed between two and four years old. The study authors didn't determine if diagnosis was before or after vaccinations. And the study authors didn't adjust for any confounders that predispose children to neurodevelopmental disorders like autism spectrum disorder. Other studies have done this, however. Indeed, there are so many studies that have done this, there are meta-analyses summarising them. Here is a meta-analysis of five cohort studies involving 1,256,407 children and five case con control studies involving 9,920 children. They found that there was no relationship between vaccination and autism and there was no relationship between vaccination and autism spectrum disorder. Of course, the whole vaccine autism claim started with Andrew Wakefield's fraudulent study in The Lancet, which has since been retracted. And he was making the claim specifically about the MMR vaccine. This has also been looked at extensively. For instance, this nationwide study from Denmark that looked at 657,461 children born between 1999 and 2010. The researchers used population registries to collect information on MMR and other childhood vaccinations, autism diagnoses, sibling history of autism and several factors thought to be related to a higher risk for autism. They then looked to see whether autism developed in children who got the MMR vaccine compared to those who didn't. Out of the population, 6,517 children were diagnosed with autism. The chances of developing autism were the same in children who received the MMR vaccine and those who didn't. Similarly, there was no increased risk for autism after MMR vaccination in subgroups of children according to sibling history of autism, autism risk factors or other childhood vaccinations or during specific periods after vaccination. Then there is this study, which included 535,544 children who were vaccinated in Finland between November 1982 and June 1986. It found no association between MMR vaccination and autism, and it also found no association between MMR vaccination and encephalitis and aseptic meningitis. And now a word from my mum, who has just remembered something very important as I've been recording this video. As a child, my mother took me and uh, the rest of the family and children um, to the doctors to have the vaccination for polio. And although it wasn't pleasant, we were saved and there were people whose children got polio and they were, they were you know twisted limbs and they never got over it and that mm. vaccination 
they would have been had a, had a real life. Yeah. So people should know if they develop vaccinations for varying illnesses, it's good to right, research it and realise that it could be a help to your family. Thank you, Mum. So in summary, the so-called study doesn't show anything because the methodology is bollocks. And better design studies show there is no relationship between vaccines and autism spectrum disorder. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. And we are going to be using some of that coffee money to buy my mum a coffee once we finish recording this video. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.